the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. West Virginia officials say they may press charges against three people just rescued from an abandoned coal mine. I'm Mark Liverman and I'll tell you about their harrowing rescue more than 111 hours after they were first trapped. And increasing numbers of local renters can't find a place to live that will let them keep their pets. Coming up, what that means for at least one local animal shelter. Just ahead of 6.30 on this uh, Thursday, Chell, I'm in Missy O'Malley with you. We'll have that local story in a minute. Meantime, our top national story this half hour. They're calling it a Christmas miracle in West Virginia. All the people who went missing last week at an old mine have been found alive. CBS's Mark Liverman is in New York with our details of their rescue. Overwhelming joy as the three people missing since last week met friends and family in Whitesville, West Virginia. They got them all three. They got a few medical conditions, but they're okay. They're going to they're, they're be fine. Erica Treadway, Cody Beverly, and Kayla Williams had entered an abandoned coal mine Saturday. They were rescued 111 hours later, covered in coal dust. Erica had lost her shoes. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. A fourth person, Eddie Williams, was also with the group. He emerged from the mine on Monday and helped search teams. This is a miracle from the good Lord because things like this don't usually end up this way. Rescue workers face dangerously low oxygen levels as they search the underground corridors. West Virginia Governor Jim Justice thanked them for their hard work. Right when they were gathering together, all of them came by me and hit me on the shoulder and said, we're going to get them. We're going to find them. And they did. Since the three who were trapped didn't stop moving, there were times they had wandered into areas that had already been searched. We go into these events not to recover, we go to rescue. It's unclear why the group went into the mine. A family member told CBS News he believed they were scavenging for copper wires that they could resell. Mark Liverman, CBS News. Now it is possible that trespassing charges could be filed. We'll keep you updated on this story. It takes me right back to the Thailand soccer rescue. Not right. as dramatic for 13 days, but still over 100 hours with low oxygen. That's some scary stuff. Yeah. Thanks. Don't go in. Don't go in. I just throw that out there. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Don't go out. <laughs> uh, temperature's a little on the chilly side. The wind is blowing. I couldn't yep. I yeah, the opportunity. Was to have, yeah. <laughs> temperature's into the teens this morning. We've got a few clouds out there. We're not talking snow, but the wind is going to be between 10 and 20 miles an hour at times today. I think our daytime high should be into the mid, maybe even upper 30s for a few areas. We do have some snow in the forecast, though. We'll talk more about that, of course, coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. Uh, 631 now. An anonymous source claims a Madison County man admitted to killing and disposing of a body of a woman on an Ennis ranch back in July. According to Madison County court records, Stanley Gordon Bernardini was arrested earlier this month after an informant told law enforcement that Bernardini said he killed his girlfriend, Michelle Soros, in his apartment and buried her body on the Braxton Jumping Horse Ranch. Investigators found evidence of a cleanup and blood spatter in Bernardini's apartment. He is being held in Gallatin County in a charge of tampering with evidence. Bernardini denies any involvement in Soros disappearance. Her body, by the way, has not been found. In other news here on your Thursday morning, finding housing in and around the Bozeman area is hard enough, even more so if you have pets. Yeah, MTN's Emma Hamilton reports on pets that are being surrendered because of the housing situation. It's, it's, it's almost an epidemic where our surrenders are 430 this year alone, and that's up 20% from a year ago. This is eight-year-old Phoebe. She's a well-behaved dog that was surrendered to Stafford Animal Shelter a couple of weeks ago because her owners couldn't find housing that allows pets. The shelter is receiving dogs and cats that used to be Stafford puppies and kittens. This room here is new to Stafford Animal Shelter. It's what they're calling the surrender room. This has been happening so much here at the shelter that they thought it was necessary to have a private room for the owners and their animals to go through this process together in private. The surrender room, it's like giving up a family uh, member and it's a very emotional experience. And so Many landlords don't allow animals because they're afraid of the wear and tear on their rental. Though one landlord told Leach that it can be beneficial to allow animals. That their gross profit goes up 10%. Um, and they charge higher rent, they charge uh, higher damage deposits. They find that the renters stay longer because they want to keep their pets and they don't have a lot of alternatives. So 
in a lot of cases, and there's a lot of studies for it, uh, that uh, it, it's good business to rent with pets. Leach says about half of the surrenders the shelter receives are due to housing issues. In Livingston, Emma Hamilton, MTN News. Now we did reach out to the Heart of the Valley Animal Shelter for comment on this story. They declined to comment. Meantime, Montana Tech has modified a recent draft proposal for budget cuts. The new version doesn't quite cut so deep. MTN's John Amy takes a closer look. After two public hearings, Montana Tech modified its proposed budget that involves cuts to programs and faculty. The campus listened to comments, questions, concerned, and that yielded uh, changes in the second version. The original recommendations released last month proposed about 13 cuts to faculty and 10 to staff at the Butte University. The proposal has recently been modified with a second draft. Version 2 saw uh, three faculty uh, put back into the budget that were originally identified uh, for reduction in version 1. In the original draft, Departments such as healthcare informatics and professional and technical writing were dissolved, but the new draft moves to partially save these departments. We may end up discontinuing the healthcare informatics degree, but the skill set that students would receive from that degree, that degree have been moved with a faculty member to the business department. A third draft will be released later this week, but ultimately Montana Tech Chancellor Don Blackheader has the authority to enact the changes. This issue has caused anxiety on the campus. It's been a difficult process, you know, when you're talking about people and their livelihoods and degrees. When this is all said and done, Montana Tech is going to be a stronger institution, better poised uh, to move forward as, again, Montana Tech, uh, Montana's only special focus uh, university. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. Now, the final revised budget is expected to be released this afternoon, and on Friday, a committee will vote on whether or not to endorse it, and then the final decision will be made by the chancellor. Well, in other news, every two years, Helena experiences a burst of activity as lawmakers, lobbyists, and the public all gather in the capital city for the state legislative session. But that session can't run smoothly without a lot of preparation behind the scenes. Dan's Jonathan Amberian found out what it takes to get the capital city ready. Right now, the halls of the Montana State Capitol are quiet. But in just under a month, that will all change as 150 legislators arrive for several months of debate over the state's laws and budget. It's an intense, stressful atmosphere. You either love it or you hate it. Lindsay Vrogan Dewey has been chief clerk of the House of Representatives since 2012. Each session, she hires more than 50 staff members to assist with things like committee meetings and the bill process. The last weeks of the year are an important time for training. It is prepping them, giving them all the tools and practicing and practicing so that when we go live January 7th, we have everything organized and set for four months. Once the session begins, lawmakers have just 90 days at the Capitol to get their work done. So whenever possible, legislative staff works ahead so the House and Senate can hit the ground running on day one. The first crop of bills have already been written. Several dozen are pre-introduced to be heard in the first few days. Rogan Dewey has to keep in contact with legislative leaders as the speaker assigns bills to committees and committee chairs schedule hearings. Text messaging is a beautiful thing. Ahead of the legislative session, House Sergeant-at-Arms Brad Murphid is focused on getting the facility ready, from the chamber and committee rooms to the phone system. I have a lot of things to do. There's a lot of little things, getting the chairs and uh, furniture and, and cleaning spills from the last session that might have been there. Look at all the furniture, make sure it's all good to go, and employees have a nice work environment. The Helena Police Department contracts with the state to provide additional security at the Capitol. They keep one officer there throughout the year. During the session, the department shifts some of its patrol officers to the Capitol. Safety is a concern at that building with all the elected officials in that area at one time, so we're definitely on the lookout for anything going on that uh, appears suspicious or maybe criminal. Lieutenant Jason Zander has worked in the Capitol for several legislative sessions. He said he's seen no major disruptions and they intend to keep it that way. 
fortunately we've been around there for a while we do get to know a lot of these folks and they get to know us and we're on a first name basis with a lot of them and it works out pretty well as the last stretch before the session begins all those preparing say they're ready for what's coming it's a marathon sprint we are here because we love it and we can't wait for january 7th for the opening ceremony when it all begins in helena jonathan ambarian mtn news it's good there's people like them that are ready for it. Yes. Uh, lawmakers have already filed almost 3,000 requests for bill drafts. That's more than 2017. However, it's likely that most of those drafts will never officially okay. be introduced. More to follow. Absolutely true. January 7th. It is time for a quick break. In a moment, we take a look at a sad reality at this time of year with male thieves. We take a closer look in this week's Fraud Watch. But first, uh, here's what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Coming up, Michael Cohen sentenced to three years for covering up what he calls President Trump's dirty deeds. We'll talk with Cohen's advisor, Lanny Davis. Plus, Kennedy Center honoree Reba McIntyre reflects on her lasting success. Coming up on CBS This Morning.